This is my advice to local music artists. When you see, we've all seen them, right? You see another local music-ish person that you're familiar with on your music scene, and they post a status on Facebook, a thing on Instagram. They're talking about, this is the top five artists in the city. These are the top 10 in the city right now. Should you pay those lists? any mind. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. All right, so local list, local top artists in your local scene, should you pay it any mind? The information, the news, right, is only as valuable as the source. So if the source of the list was, let's say Birdman did some research and he's looking to sign some artists from your local city and Birdman put together a list of his top five or his top 10, that's pretty valuable. Why? Because he has the power, he's got authority to actually do something with his list make an impact, make a change, do anything. Nine times out of 10, anyone that's making one of these local lists has zero authority, zero impact, and whether they put you as number one on their list or number 10,000 on their list, it doesn't change for you. So it's like, what not to do is think small. Think small and think local. What you want to do is think big and think global. Majority of the population out there is a follower. What that means is, if there's 10 people in a room, eight out of 10 of those people, so 80% of the population is a follower. So the only person that's gonna give you the time of day to even attempt to allow you to win them over as a fan, 20% of the population. So now you gotta take your local city. So I'm gonna use my city for example. So I live in Lansing, Michigan. The population here is about 115,000 people. Of that 115,000 people, 20% of them are not followers. 20% of them are open-minded, willing to give new things a try, right? Try new things. So that brings me down to about 25 to 30,000 people. Now of that 25 to 30,000 people, how many of them actually are in my target demographic to be a fan of my music? That's what you gotta ask yourself. Maybe your audience demographic, maybe it's 18 to 24 year olds that are into trap music, for example, right? So of those 25,000, there might only be two, 3,000 people that are actually a target fit for your fan base that live in your local city. Now versus you aim for worldwide. Another thing is the people in your hometown, they know you in their eyes. For me, for example, but man, that's not Crackalack. That's Nick Basel from Lansing, man. I went to high school with him or my cousin used to date him or blah, blah, blah. Like that's how the local people are gonna look at you. But once you reach out to a brand new audience that don't know anything about your past, they didn't grow up with you, they don't know anything about you, they're more willing and more likely to give you a chance. Those are the people that you wanna target with your music. And that's why I'm so big on focusing on global right? Utilize the internet. You know, at this day and age, having this makes us very lucky. Let's debunk another thing. Back in the day, you had to do on foot, word of mouth. Be a person like this, yo, how you doing? Here's a flyer, you a fan of hip hop music? Oh, check me out. This is my new CD, this is my new music, blah, blah, blah. You gotta do that, right? That takes time, energy, and effort. And can online social media, can that trump that face-to-face, hand-to-hand combat, like that type of marketing? No, it can't. But at the same time, if you wanted to reach 100,000 people, it's impossible to do that on foot, face-to-face. -face, you know what I mean? Like that's what you're going to be doing 24 hours a day for years versus you can utilize the internet, give the platform a little bit of money, and then they can go out and find those people and do the work for you. And it's more organic because they're seeing a taste, like if you had good advertising, good content, and if they like what they see, then they click on your page for more of it, then they decide to follow you, right? That's how you build an audience online using social media. When one of the main lessons that I learned with not focusing on the local scene is I've been at this for 19 years. When I conquered my local scene, so I, I had basically established that anyone in everyone in the market for like my services knew of me, had worked with me one way or another, my local scene, and I was poor, right? So I had like reached the top of it. I was like, yo, I'm the man in my city. I don't have so that's why when I see people coming up and they're like, yo, I'm trying to be the man in my city. It's like, ask yourself, who is the man in your city right now? Who can everyone say that's the man in the city? Look at their lifestyle. Look at their income. What type of car do they drive? What type of house do they live in? So if you live in a city like New York City, Atlanta, Miami, a big city like that, being the man in your city could be life changing. But if you live in the middle of buff nowhere, what does being the man in that city actually equal for you? Utilizing this, utilizing the internet. I'm in Lansing, Michigan right now talking to a camera in my recording studio and you're watching this from somewhere other than in my local recording studio in Lansing, Michigan. You're watching this from somewhere else and that's utilizing the power of the internet. Could I go around and meet every single local music artist and talk to them for this 10 minutes about this lesson and I go to the next person, I talk to them for 10 minutes and I go to the next person, talk to them. Once I've talked to six people, that's an hour of my time. Or I sit down and I talk to the camera one time for 10 minutes. 
I put it on the internet and then the right people end up finding me because my messaging is correct, because my marketing is correct, because my branding is correct. It's all on point. It all leads back to my mission, right? It's working smarter versus working harder. Another thing is wasting your time and energy performing at the local open mic hip hop night in your city. Ask yourself, how big of an opportunity is this? Who's gonna be there? Am I performing in front of 15 other local artists that are all waiting to perform, five to 10 people with them? That's not a good use of your time and energy. If you need to get the jitters out to perform for the first time, okay, what the hell, go for it. You know, have some fun, but realize that that's fun. That's not really productive work. It's more productive for you to sit in the house and be on your phone editing TikTok video to post promoting your music than going to a local open mic night and performing in front of a bunch of local artists. You have to ask yourself the opportunity. Who would be in attendance to actually impact your life? Is there anyone that's gonna be in that building that have any type of authority or any type of power? Is their history of, man, every month or last month, so-and-so performed here and he's on the radio now. Last six months ago, this person, he used to perform here and now he's there. Has that ever happened at that venue with that promoter? If that hasn't happened, you're wasting your time and energy. It's better than nothing, but there's a lot more things that are better than that. This is where strategy comes in. If you guys would like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna put a link in the description. I'm gonna do a limited amount of one-on-one -on -one calls. Also, if you ever have a specific question that you feel like if I answered your question, and I can do it in a future video and it could help other people out there, drop it in the comments, you guys. Subscribe for more, I'll see you guys next time. Do me a favor, get the video a thumbs up. Appreciate you guys.